Coming up on CNET Live, tech from yesteryear. Oh, so you mean stuff like a fifth generation, fifth generation, fifth generation video iPod? The uh, fifth and core <laughs> generation of the iPod. No, I'm talking about the TRS-80 or even older. Uh, the folks uh. from the Digibarn have raided their hayloft, bringing in some gems. All that and more coming up on CNET Live. CNET Live, everybody. I'm Brian Cooley. He's Tom Mirite. And the phone lines oh, are open. Brian Coley, thank you so much. <laughs> at triple eight nine hundred CNET. Not only are we taking you back into the fabulous history of personal well, computing, that was stuff they brought in. With awesome. the, yeah, the guys from Digibarn are going to be coming on in just about ten minutes, and they're going to walk These us are all through portables. History, history, right here, folks. From the luggable to the truly portable, we're going to meet your iPhone's distant cousin as well. So that's all coming up. But Bruce Damer and Alan Lundell from the Digibarn joining us. Thank you guys hey for guys. coming to Trek oh, up here. Thanks for having You're us. Very welcome. We appreciate it. And thanks for bringing all this great mobile computing. Look at this. Because they came all the way up the peninsula. It had to be mobile. This is the entire yes. history of mobile personal computing, like on one table. It's all yeah. here. Who else could do that? Before we get started on looking at these treasures, quick yeah. one. What is the Digibarn for folks who haven't heard of you guys yet? It's a nerd palace, nerd memory palace. So nerds come there, they find their first born, their first loves, and <laughs> yeah. re restore the history. And there's hundreds of personal yeah. computers, computers there. computers and three pigs. Yeah, we're looking at it now. We see a walkthrough here. It's when Tom nice. went down we got, to visit there's you guys. Our, there's our Cray supercomputer yeah. there, Apple II. That's in the lineage uh, room. That's the lineage room there. And, and you got some machines that are signed yeah. by the designers, Waz. Waz, and Waz signed, signed, Mac signed and, them. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So everything yeah. from the handheld yeah. to the Cray and everything in between from the early days of computing and especially personal computing. Personal computing, yes. interactive personal computing. Let's look yes. at some of the stuff you've got then, starting off with, uh, where does the timeline begin? Well, we're sort of starting off today with the HP 35. This is a 45, yeah. but the 35 had 35 buttons. That's why they call it the 35. Oh, really? True <laughs> engineering scientific genius in this, and this yeah. really started a revolution. Yeah, Programmable? We just, a, uh, we just did a Tales of Silicon Valley on this. Just uh, did If you look yeah. elsewhere on CNN TV, you can find it. It talks about how Woz was working on this calculator, right? Right. Yeah, Woz was working on it, and he left HP to go to this crazy venture called Apple. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. And then what we have in here is by the late 70s and early 80s, we have these kind of... The, uh, one of the Trash 80 models. That's right, the Trash 80, as <laughs> it was said. Yeah. 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 Yes, this was actually portable, very useful to um, people like journalists who like to write on airplanes and uh, have full-size keyboard. And, and for folks who don't remember modem. this. You had a modem built in. Modem, modem built in modem. That's what made so great for journalists. Whopping 300 baht, I believe. And this is the Radio Shack product, which a lot of folks, you know, today yeah. had no idea Radio Shack was a killer in yeah. early yeah. portable computing. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, they really the screen size. That's not that much bigger than, uh, than what you got. Shorter, but no. not yeah. that much narrower. Right. And what's right in front of it here? The Epson HX20, which had a built-in printer. Yeah, next step. And built-in cassette <laughs> storage <laughs> unit. Yeah. Look at that, storage too, man. Storage unit, so portability. <laughs> yeah. And then in the slightly <clears throat> less than portable category is the luggable Osborne One. Now that's a classic right there. A classic. Look at the size of this yes. thing. It's got mass. I mean, it's a big thing. Look at thing. how it bends when yes. you push on it. Yes, but it had, it <laughs> had storage too. It had, it had floppies. It had uh, floppies ran CPM. And it ran CPM and, and Star. keyboard, and you could carry it on airplanes. You couldn't quite get it under the airplane this is seat. What a, this is a five and a quarter inch floppy. This is back when floppies were floppy. Yes, yep. they were really they were floppy. Really that was back floppy. in the day. The yeah. real yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. These running on? About 1800 bucks. Yeah. That in mean. those dollars. In those, those big dollars. dollars. Yeah, that and was a big deal in the history of portable commissions. This, 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 yeah. The same year we had this, the Grid Compass oh, 2, which is great. titanium well, is piece. Feel the weight on that. A, yes, a clamshell a design. The same and year as the Osborne. The same year. $10,000. $10,000. $10,000. $10,000. $80,000. $80,000. $80,000. We'll get you. Right. A little less and a lot more weight. But these ran on the space shuttle, no? Yeah. That's right. They were literally used to for the astronauts to look at where they were in their orbit and where their ground tracking stations were. No floppies, no hard drives, though. They were more powerful. Than, than the machines that ran the shuttle. Yeah, right, yeah. Wow. That's, the, that's the amazing part. Yeah. Um, now, this is where it gets, starts to get a little bit closer to today. Here's the Newton. 1993, <laughs> handwriting recognition. Yes, we don't even have that on our iPhone. Oh, yet. have you two met? Yeah. This is yeah, your yeah, great grandfather yeah. over here. You need to take a few lessons from this one, and you from this one. <laughs> That's Seriously, amazing. I need handwriting recognition. Hey, Granddad, how's <laughs> <Please Yeah. take laughs> it going, Pops? It's a family reunion right here on <laughs> CNN Live between handheld Apple products. Yeah. And now, then Alan can tell us about the pocket well, yeah, PC. Yeah, we've got an Apple, and we have a pocket PC. Oh, yeah, the, the, for, for portables, this really was a pre-Cambian uh, revolution. Lots of lots of uh, machines were coming out really quick. And this was a design to be small, really really tiny, even smaller than the yeah. Crash 80. And it, uh, basically, you could take it on an airplane, you could program with it, and it had all kinds of peripherals. It was before 
before the days of uh, USB interface, so you had a, a unique type of uh, uh, cards uh, connection. Right you had now. cards that you could put in, and a lot of the concepts we use today, but completely uh, clunky and large peripherals. They weren't tiny and small. Bigger than that in yeah. some cases. Yeah, in some cases it was bigger than this. That's interesting, uh, Alan. That the device yeah. doesn't look that much different. That would almost fly on a store shelf today. That yeah. wouldn't make you go, whoa, whereas everything else here would. That's it looks right. sweet. You know, you can almost put it in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. keyboard, but you don't get on anything. Yeah. Right. Not, you know, yeah. little button. And What's going on here? This is a, a very wonderful, mysterious tablet. It was probably the serious, first serious tablet handwriting recognition machine uh, called the Go PenPoint, oh, running the PenPoint yeah. operating system. And Gary Downing demoed this very unit to Bill Gates, and he went off and did something called Pen Windows. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is a beautiful machine. Coincidence? We think not. Wow. So, uh, and this is also an idea that's come back, like the Newton has come back as the iPhone. This and has come the, back as tablet and windows the today. Touch and the yeah. touch interfaces. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. an idea that was ahead of its time. You might argue that tablet is still ahead of its time, yeah. depending now, on what sales. Year, what year yeah. did you say this was? Uh, 1992. So 16 yeah. years old. 16 yeah. years. And, this, and an idea that still hasn't even fully caught on yet. That's it's right. Still the it's grasping still grasping the market. Coming. And then it kind of looks like the new picture frames. Well, that's one of the crazy things about the DigiBarn when you guys were kind enough to let me tour is seeing mm -hmm. all of this history and all, hearing all these stories and, and so many of them are still applicable today or, or, or we're Absolutely. seeing the same patterns mm -hmm. work through. It's really really incredible. And this, this is not a computer. This no, is not a computer, but we are becoming walking computers. Soon we'll have yeah. subcutaneous computing, but um, oh, the, Ouch, man. the idea is that that you went from portability that was like this to your iPhones, everything you'd ever need, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. And so it's got to be built into garments because you're it's pulling out of your pocket yeah. whatnot. So I designed this. It's called a cyber doublet. It's based on a Renaissance jacket. And uh, it's like a cool thing. So it's not like a sort great. of a, a journalist jacket. So we've got the iPod here. You've got cord management all the way up and around the collar. And mm -hmm. you can put your cell phones and everything there and run the cords like buses to run all the cords. Oh, interesting. Yeah, physical buses to physical. run cabling and, and to can, store machines. You can remove off all the panels. These panels come off and everything. And you can make this into a solar collector. <laughs> yeah. huh. Very green. I think we have so. Dr. Merritt's wardrobe <laughs> yeah. uh, update figured out right yeah. here, Mr. Yeah, I mean, no, no knock on, on Scotty vest, but that is a lot more fashionable. Yeah. Think, right? That rocks. This is, a design, that rocks. This is designed to, to be like the uh, character in Snow Crash, YT. Yeah. You know? Do you have a katana holder? Yeah. Ah, that's, that's, what that you can add that's what I need. That's what I need. There it is, the, the renaissance man of the 21st century. Yes. Fully cyber and body yes. network. Now, uh, body folks network. who want to check out Digibarn, want to find out how to get there, when you guys are open to give a tour, how do they do it? What, what should they do? Uh, go to digibarn.com okay. and just go to our sign-up form, get on the form, check that you want to be on the mailing list. There it is. And yep. you'll get the invitation for next open houses. Excellent. Mm -hmm. and, and you guys are, again, for folks who don't know, uh, Boulder Creek near, near Santa Cruz, California, yeah. if you're trying to get a fix on where these guys are. So uh, just between Santa Cruz and San Jose, uh, yeah. as you were right. saying. Right. Creek Road exit off of uh, 17. Yes, yeah, so all for our Bay Area listeners, easy to get to. And if you mm -hmm. want to see more garbs like this, tomorrow night at the Exploratorium is Second Skin. It's a fashion show that merges tech and new fashion. Bruce is going to be the walking server there. I'll be a walking server. Cool, okay. Yeah. Right. Exploratorium San Francisco tomorrow, tomorrow night. Yeah, tomorrow night. Good yeah. deal. <laughs> Guys, thanks a lot for bringing yeah, so history yeah, pleasure. to live on Live. Thanks for having us. Good now, stuff. Bruce, if you can't fly yeah. out to San Francisco, you can go to digibarn.com and look around at the videos and stories. It's almost an inexhaustible resource online as well.